Welcome to what is no doubt the sweetest episode of the Intermami Weekly Show here in 2024. We've got a lot to unpack and a lot of sweet treats to eat as well. We are here inside of Museum of Ice Cream Miami with the Arsenal great Kieran Gibbs. I'm Joe Malfa. Kieran, we're ditching our usual backdrop of Chase Stadium, but for good reason here. This place just opened up here in September. We'll chat about uh, the place a bit as we get forward in, into the episode, and there's a lot to unpack here. It's a great place to be in the heart of Miami. If you're around and you don't have an Inter-Miami game interfering with coming here, make sure you come down here. We'll get to all that in a bit. But we did have two games this weekend for Inter-Miami, Kieran. Both end up as draws, so not wins, and that's that's something we're not used to as of late. It's been win after win after win for the group, uh, but still strong showings even in those draws. Yeah, and listen, it was a difficult week, Joe. You know, you have two teams, not only with, with quality, but a lot to play for. And, you know, sometimes those those fixtures can be can be difficult, I think, as well. The conditions um, of New York City with, with the stadium, it was an adjustment, and the turf game in away in Atlanta as well. So it was a tricky week to get through, but I think they came through it unscathed, um, you know, with all things considered a lot of rotation in the team um, and I thought that those players you know stood up to the task and, and, and we got through um, you know with an important two points that you know puts us in a, a great position for, for the number one spot. Yeah and two games 2-2-1-1 two, two, one, one. that means we got a lot of goals and highlights to show you so we'll dive right into it with that Atlanta match in the midweek on the road against United and, and really Kieran it was one of those games where we felt like it would be rotation for the roster. It turned out to be, but still an incredible showing in the meantime. It was, yeah. And I, I thought they started really bright, actually. they uh, You could see that Atlanta feared a lot of uh, Miami's attacking prowess. And uh, they, they, they did start the game really well, Miami. From that point on, it just seemed like, you know what? Even though this was the roster and, and some players were not in the 11, they would get the job done and they get the early goal as well in the first half. It turned out to be another one of those games where just the role players stood up, including Ruiz getting the goal. Yeah, another fabulous moment for him. Uh, he's a, a great little player that he's grown in stature over the last year or two and uh, it was a it was a lovely tidy finish from him and on the road against a team that's in a must win situation desperate Atlanta to try and make the playoffs you knew you were going to get their best shot and they would eventually answer back yeah I mean these teams rich in history in the league they're they're going to give everything they can to to get back into the game and, and get you know something on the board Big week for Leo Campana. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. He's a little bit fortunate here with a deflection, but the form he's been in, those are the kind of bounces you get. Exactly. Fort fortune favors favors the brave, and Leo Campana, again, stepping up for his team. Uh, with big moments when when needed, and he's consistent in, in doing that. And, uh, amazing couple of games from him to, to, to notch. Um, really happy for him. Really had an opportunity to maybe get it to 3-1 and put the game to bed. Unable to cash in on those opportunities into Miami. Brad goes on making big save after big save. This one stopped off the line. And then you tip your cap to this finish from Alexi Midanchuk. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. It's it's one of the goals of the season, I think. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic finish. I mean, you can't really expect Drake to do anything from there. Um, you don't often hit them that sweetly, <laughs> but when you do, uh, it's, it's, it's great to see. And there's a reason they paid top dollar to bring him in from Atalanta. And he's starting to prove why he was worth the investment here for Atlanta United. From that point, it finishes 2-2. Two to two, And I think the big theme coming out of the day in this one, Kieran, was just simply the fact that it was a midweek. You had to rotate some of the depth pieces who maybe hadn't gotten some time lately, had a chance to play, and it didn't look like the team missed a beat whatsoever. No, I think that they've 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 got themselves the respect now from from other teams in the league, and so um, that's a good place to be. And and I think that even when you rotate the the results from the team and the performances um, have continued. And we've seen that throughout the last couple of months with, with the biggest players missing. Um, so that's great to see for the rest of the season, you know, especially as going to the playoffs. We want to make sure that, you know, everyone's 
fitness levels are high and everyone's ready to go and, and games like that can be really important for the end of the season when uh, when when you could be needed, you know? And the calculated risk from Tata Martino to rest some guys for that Atlanta game, keep everybody 100% fresh going into the weekend against NYCFC. We dive into those highlights now and it was another one where crowd was going crazy, fans were given the quote-unquote New York welcome. Uh, I'll leave it at that for Messi if you saw the video of the team bus arriving. That's New York, baby, and uh, they did a good job of of shutting that crowd up a little bit early. They did, they did. It was a, it was an intense start to the game and it was, uh, you know, I didn't realize New York City fans were, were so loud. I didn't, uh, <laughs> I've not seen that before, but it was, um, it was, and, and, and I, you could see that it took Miami a while uh, in this game to to really get to grips with the, the dimensions of, of the stadium and the pitch. It always is an adjustment. I remember playing there. Um, it's probably my least favorite fixture, to be honest, <laughs> of, uh, of the MLS calendar. But, you know, they, they, they just dug in, didn't they? They, they knew they had to... Um, they knew that they were going to be under pressure from New York. And it didn't click for Miami as much uh, as, as we wanted, obviously. But, you know, even when it it's not their day, they just look dangerous at any moment. And then you see here with Campana's finish, um, the, the, the wonderful play from Messi driving at his defenders and, and slotting in Jordi Alba um, with a wonderful assist. Um, so, yeah, I mean, listen, I think a draw is a fair result. Uh, obviously, you know, to go that to go one nil up and then not close the game out and concede in the in the last minute in both games is um, something that Tata's going to want to to improve. Um, but obviously, you, you know, you have to give credit to, to right. the teams that um, are desperate to get into the into the playoffs. You know, clubs like New York and Atlanta. These these clubs expect to be in in that position so um it was it was a it was a hard fought battle from from both games and leo campana gets a tip of the cap as well you see two goals from him one in each game he's the club's all-time leading goal scorer and he just continues whatever his number is called upon we've said it all year long kieran where Luis Suarez maybe needed a day off, or he was on international duty with Uruguay. Whatever the case may be, whenever Leo Campana has been asked to start, feels like he's scoring. Whenever he's been asked to come in off the bench and make an impact, feels like he's scoring. And come playoff time and in a knockout play, you need that off the bench. I mean, you even just saw it all summer at Copa and at Euros. How many times did somebody sub in in the 78th, 83rd minute and be that impact player, score that match winning or equalizing goal? That's Leo Campana. It is, and it's really hard to actually tr explain how difficult it is to stay at such a consistent and a high level when you're not getting as many minutes. You really have to be uh, at the top of your game in training every day. Um, and you have to give him so much credit for that because he stepped up whenever called upon. Um, so, so someone like that with, with that kind of mentality um, is, is showing you that he's a top, top striker and he doesn't complain. He doesn't ever, we don't hear from him. Um, we only hear from him, to be honest, when he's just celebrating yeah. and he's scoring a goal, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, which is great. Um, 31 goals top top scorer for Miami into Miami incredible achievement for uh, for someone who's pretty young still as well we've got a lot of hopefully a lot of Leo Campana left to see um, I'm really enjoying watching him he seems like he's uh, learning a lot from from the likes of Suarez he's refined his game yeah. he, he, he's polished he, he's polished his game a lot um, and that's great to see from someone so young because we've got a lot more to come from him now the last few weeks you and I have pretty much started every show by saying things are great can't complain right now, nothing to complain about. It's been win after win, and in most cases, some comfortable wins. So this is a week where I think we can actually press on a specific topic because both games conceding late equalizers. So does it impact the, the chase for first? We've still got that well in hand and can ice that over the next week or two. Does it impact the playoff spot? Because obviously we clinched a long time ago. So it doesn't harm anything in the bigger picture. You still picked up a point in each game, but there is a quote-unquote negative to, to look at, which is conceding late on, equalizers in both. A little bit of a wake-up call, maybe? And how do they respond from that to, to make sure that doesn't happen more going forward? Yeah, I mean, listen, there's there's some things you can't control too much, like the wonder goal from from, oh, right, from the kid right. from Atlanta. You know, there's not much you can you can do about that. Um, but obviously, you know, we, we would like to see them better on set pieces. We have seen them do incredibly well over the last few months uh, from that. It was only the beginning of this season and, and last Last season that we was having that issue so I think I, I would like to put that down to just a one-off 
um, because you know typically throughout the season we defended well um, from from set pieces, so especially better than than last season. So um, I think it's just about you know the next couple of weeks in training, just going over those things and spending more time on defending set pieces, attacking set pieces as well. Uh, but yeah, just polishing up those little small errors uh, over the next couple of weeks and getting ready for the for the playoffs will definitely be Tata's uh, main objective. All the while that all this is going on on the field, plenty going on in the community for Inter-Miami off the field. We just saw yet another beach cleanup for the group. Uh, Inter-Miami and Frack Group hosted a second beach cleanup at the State Park in Dania Beach. First team players, Marcelo Wega, Yannick Bright, Robert Taylor, Lawson Sunderland, and Ryan Saylor all participated alongside staff and local students, focused on removing microplastics to protect marine life, including turtles, fish, and birds. Thousands of microplastic pieces were collected, raising awareness of the impact uh, plastic debris on our oceans and Ryan Saylor highlighted the significance of cleaning beaches and how it benefits both the environment and the community. <laughs> and just more great things to see in the community for Inter Miami and we're out in the community again as you can see here at Museum of Ice Cream Miami. Let's dive into how awesome this place is because there's no real other word to describe it. Number one vanilla, you, it was Gotta always, be. it had to be, had to be. it just had yeah. to be. We are here in the carnival with Angela Corvello, ice cream named Blue Moon. Correct. So we, we've got a lot to unpack here, including this delicious treat that we'll get to in, in a little bit. But Angela, so you, you and I were just chatting a bit and you, you sort of started softly here in 2017, but now you're on a permanent base. We are here on a permanent basis as of September 6th. This is our new home in Miami. And this is location one of how? This is location five. Uh, we currently have uh, locations in Austin, Chicago, New York, Singapore, Miami, and then we'll be opening Boston in December. So so just tell me a bit about just kind of the, the general idea here. I mean, look, there's a million and one things to do in Miami. Sure. You're trying to be a million and two, and oh, as soon as we stepped inside here, we maybe wanted to move it up the list from a million and two to just number two. So outside of after going to into Miami game, of course. Of but course. So much to do here, just walk us through. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Museum of Ice Cream Miami is, is built to bring out the kid inside of you. Um, all of our rooms, we have 14 activations here, are designed to make you feel like a kid again. And what makes us the top attraction in Miami is that we are the sweetest in Miami. So we're very happy to be here permanently. And there's a little bit of something for everybody here. The idea of this museum um, from our founders, Mary Ellis Bunn and uh, Manish Vora, their, their vision was that people, when they came out of the pandemic, were gonna need togetherness. And they were absolutely right in creating these museums because that's what we're all craving and being together and have a little fun and leave your problems outside. Is there a favorite room you have out of all the rooms in the museum? Without giving away too much, I do have a favorite room. It's called the Cream Liner. Okay. Okay. Well, we're in Carnival and I was handed this when I got in here. You said people are craving something to do with others, right? I'm craving trying this right now. Yeah. So, so what exactly am I having? So this is called the Beach Bomb. It's our homage, obviously, to Miami Beach. The bottom le level is the water. The middle is the sand. The uh, white is the clouds, and the orange is the beautiful sunshine that we get so much of. What do you think? Wait a second. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, obviously, this is a selling point on its own, just who doesn't love ice cream, but okay. uh, when people are in town, you're walking around, you're downtown here, and you see different things going on, the first thing I noticed that kind of caught my eye when I was walking by, the colors. Uh, I mean, everything just pops, and I'm sure that's my design, obviously. Um, but just nip, nip, went into sort of the design of, of this location and all the different ones. So the, the, our colors, we stay true uh, in everything that we do, um, and just like our ice cream names. So, you know, variations of pink, red, pomegranate, you know, Lerona, you'll see throughout the uh, entire menu. And all of the venues have the same color uh, palette. So it's really, really cool how our produ production and design really make these colors come to life and pop in different ways in each city. I had certain things that are unique to each city, like this tree, this oak, exactly. but these, those little uniqueities will, will be there throughout. Absolutely. The cream liner, that's a first for us. So um, Miami gets the first okay. uh, cream liner to, to experience. That's excellent. Well, there's yeah. plenty of reasons to come out here. And, and I know that you will miss being here, of course, before you go on to the next venture in Boston. Um, but, but what's been your favorite aspect so far of, of bringing this location to life? 
my favorite thing about Museum of Ice Cream is that I can't talk to anybody about the Museum of Ice Cream without me smiling <laughs> and without them smiling. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to bring smiles and happiness to everybody who's looking for it, which is everyone. And so that's what we're really, really good at. And we dare you not to smile when you say Museum of Ice Cream. Yeah, well, I've smiled it up. We've talked it up. <laughs> it's time for me to finish this. Angela, thank you. Best of luck at Boston. Thank you for hosting us. Make sure you come down here to the Museum of Ice Cream Miami. I'm going to be here all day. See you later, guys. A big thank you to everybody involved in having us out here today. It's been awesome to be here, Kieran. I know I'm looking to bring my wife here. You're looking to bring the little one here and, and probably more than once as well. There's no ice cream <laughs> left because you ate it all already, Joe. <laughs> this is an easy walk for you. I mean, you'll be here every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely one of, the, one of the coolest collabs we've done, hasn't it? It's uh, a really, really fascinating place. Uh, I'll definitely be back. And it's the correct shade of pink as well. I mean, it doesn't get better than this when it comes to Inter-Miami here in South Florida. Well, we have another game to look forward to to this weekend, pick up the pieces a little bit after the back-to-back -back draws last week. As far as Supporter Shield and, and first place goes, we thought that this one against Charlotte could be the day, could be the day at home to wrap up Supporter Shield. Unfortunately, Columbus held up there into the bargain as well and, and picked up a victory this past week. So mathematically, cannot officially do it this week anymore. Columbus, in terms of points available, whatnot, can still be one more point to the good. Not done, done yet, but a win would put that magic point number, quote unquote, at one, meaning the rest of the way, if Inter-Miami beats Charlotte this weekend at home, the rest of the season, it would mean Inter-Miami dropping all nine remaining points. It would mean Columbus picking up all remaining 12 points, and Cincinnati then would be out. Only Columbus could catch us if we beat Charlotte. So we can't clinch the thing this weekend anymore, but we can put it right there on the goal line, just begging for a tap in. So it's a massive one to pick up the three points and really would also keep us in the race to set the all time points and wins record as well. So after the two draws this week, a massive one against Charlotte to pick up the pieces. Yeah, still a lot to play for. And I'm sure that the boys actually at this stage, knowing that they're so close, they'll just want to get the job done now and, and then give themselves that breathing space of a few games where Tata can focus on things that haven't gone so well this season and, uh, you know, keep up with the rotation a little bit because you're going to need all legs ready for uh, for the playoffs. You want all guns blazing, full, fully available squad. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really hoping that they, you know, get another three points this weekend and, and get closer to that ever so desperate supporter shield. Yeah, it's going to be right there. And again, for the record, as far as that goes, need to pick up nine points to tie the record in the final four games, 10 to beat the record. That's this one against Charlotte. Then beyond that, it's Columbus on the road, Toronto on the road and home against New England. So it's all there. It still has to be something the players are thinking about. Obviously, you, you want the one seed because it means you're home for the whole postseason. Obviously, you want to lift supporter shield. It's something else to go in the cabinet. But the players got to be thinking at this point about the history as well to be the best team in MLS history. Oh, I mean, it's massive. You don't get, I said it the other week, you don't get in this position many times um, in your career. So, you know, the chance to make history, you have to be fully, fully prepared and focused um, because they don't come around often. Absolutely. And make sure you're there this Saturday night again, Charlotte, 7.30 at Chase Stadium. It is Hispanic Heritage Night brought to you by Espelon Tequila. So make sure you're there early in the fan zone. Can have some fun, can have some tequila. You can be back there after the game to celebrate with some more Espelon as well after three more hard-earned, hopefully, points for Inter-Miami. And make sure you're with us every step of the way, the rest of the way, right here on YouTube. Like and subscribe for every edition of the Inter-Miami Weekly Show.